I'm going to be 82 years old and I've been taking sleeping pills for 30 years. My sleep specialist said that um, it can temporarily affect my memory. Oh, and it doesn't very much. But the point is, I'm trying to get off of them. And the nights that I don't sleep, I don't take them, I don't sleep. So which is worse, not sleeping all night or taking the pills? I, I do melatonin, I exercise periodically. I, I'm on a plant-based diet. I don't eat any sugar. I do everything you guys say to do, <laughs> but I'm addicted to those sleeping pills. It's the only pill I take. What's your answer? Um, so Ms. Friedman, thanks very much for, uh, for your question. Um, uh, it depends on the sleeping pills. Certain sleeping pills, especially benzodiazepines, can affect uh, thinking and can become uh, foster dependence and can be very difficult to come off of them. Uh, in general, as you probably know, you probably want to have good sleep hygiene, trying to go to bed at the same time every day, waking up at the same time every day, avoiding eating uh, before going to bed, um, uh, avoiding screens, uh, <laughs> except maybe for this conference uh, and others uh, before, you go, uh, before you go to bed. Um, if you're on benzodiazepines and the like, sometimes you can start by reducing uh, the amount of your taking at each uh, dose, for example. And sometimes that can help people get weaned uh, off these medicines. Uh, but again, to my earlier comment, sometimes treatments can be more damaging um, than the disease. Um, I tried a year ago and I ended up in really bad shape because I wasn't sleeping. So uh, I know, except for this conference, well, when should I, should I stop using my phone at noon? <laughs> or, I mean, I'm serious because uh, yeah. this is a problem. I do, I do use it the screen. I, um, I can't sleep, so I turn on the TV to fall asleep, and I don't want to do that. But I, I, I don't know what to do. Should I just wing it and not sleep for a while and get so tired that I have to sleep? I don't know. I, I'd have to be your doctor to give you better advice, but. I'll tell you they what don't I have do. any I, I, answers. I'm sorry. I, I put my phone when I when I go to bed. I put my phone in my closet and I leave it there. Uh, so the only thing I see at night is the the, the newspaper and then my wife and then uh, sleep. Um, so I, I think uh, these screens can be very disrupting to uh, our sleep wake uh, cycles. Uh, exercise uh, can be beneficial for helping promoting sleep. Avoiding food at night, um, going to bed, getting a new habit uh, can all be helpful, but it can take time. All right, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Lorraine, I would like to say that for me, exercise is number one for going to sleep. If I don't exercise in a day, I'm in the office all day long and I really don't get any exercise, I don't sleep well either. But if I do get at least one good session of aerobic exercise, it really helps me sleep. So do stay within your aerobic limits. Uh, but if you can do that, it can really help you sleep. And for me, that's my best way to go to sleep. Thank you. Thank, Good luck. thank you so much. Emmanuel, would you like to ask a question or where are you from? I'm from Ottawa, Canada. My question is, is there a link between aluminum and Alzheimer? Because I would like to change my pots, my casseroles to cast iron. I don't know if you heard about that. Steve, you wanna go about aluminum and uh, Alzheimer's? Sure, uh, I'd be happy to. Um, well, it really depends which studies you look at. All the studies published by Reynolds uh, and sponsored by them show that aluminum is not a problem at all. And um, that's just, you know, pretty standard. Uh, aluminum actually does not cross the blood brain barrier. That's good news. However, it can be inhaled, and so antiperspirants often contain aluminum, and that way it can bypass the blood-brain barrier and get into your sinuses and into your brain. So that's one of the main routes there. On the other hand, I see no reason to use aluminum pots or pans or even aluminum foil uh, because aluminum is not a essential mineral for humans. So we won't lose anything by not getting it, and I would say the research is not conclusive Unless you get the aluminum into your brain, it probably won't hurt it. But there are several routes where you can get it in, uh, usually inhaled. So watch out for those things. And of course, aluminum is found in uh, baking powders, certain baking powders, and of course, many pans. 
and it might be a good idea to eliminate it if you're worried about it. But I don't see it as a huge problem. But like I say, the research has been skewed both ways. So it's hard to make a conclusion. Just one other point, building off uh, Steve's comments about air pollution, uh, hitchhiking on those tiny little particles that make up smog are some heavy metals like uh, lead, platinum, and iron uh, that can then uh, bypass our normal protective uh, mechanisms in our nose and our uh, upper airways. Yes. And uh, likely uh, carry those uh, heavy metals uh, into the brain. But I don't think the pots that you're using would be the, my biggest concern. Okay. Isabel, would you like to ask a question and where are you from? Yes, please. Um, hi, I'm from New Zealand. Um, I'm asking because my mom has uh, dementia. She's now 82 and she has dementia since uh, she was 64 when it started. Um, but she always suffered from cholesterol and she always took statin. And I wonder if statin uh, um, triggered the, the dementia because the statin has a bad name. Um, Stephen, I'll go first. Uh, so uh, Isabel, first of all, thanks for your question. I'm sorry to hear about your mother's health. Um, so high cholesterol and other heart disease risk factors increase the risk for dementia. Um, statins largely work by decreasing the cholesterol uh, uh, cholesterol levels and may help uh, decrease, uh, lower the risk uh, for heart, certainly for heart disease and may do so for uh, dementia. I think it's unlikely that the statins themselves are contributing to the dementia that your mom's experiencing. Well, yes, they do decrease cholesterol and cholesterol is a risk factor for dementia. However, uh, statins, uh, which what they do is they reduce the amount of coenzyme Q10 that we make in our cells by about 40%, a significant amount, so that the lack of coenzyme Q10 can cause brain cells to die and mitochondria to underproduce energy so brain cells die. So there is a problem. Studies looking at statins and dementia have come up about even because the good news is they lower the cholesterol and lower the risk. And the bad news is they lower the coenzyme Q10 and raise the risk. There are other ways to lower blood cholesterol. One lady we worked with had a total cholesterol of 384 and she lowered that down to 144 with no drugs by dietary changes over the course of one year. So if you can change your cholesterol with diet, as your cholesterol comes down, ask your doctor, please, my cholesterol is so low, can I cut my statins in half? And he, maybe he'll say yes, and then eventually get off of the statins. So you have only the good benefits of having low cholesterol and not the side effects of the drug. There are other possible side effects of statins, which are muscle problems that happen in certain individuals too. All treatments have their side effects. So the more you can do without medicines, the better. Uh, Steve, Dr. Dorsey, would you like to make any final comments? We're very grateful for all the time you've given us tonight. Any final thoughts to wrap up with? I want to say that I am honored to work with Dr. Dorsey and Dr. Bredesen. It's been a real pleasure, and uh, I'd love to stay in touch over time. And thank you all for attending tonight and listening in on this conference. And thank you also for moderating this talk. Uh, we really appreciate the great job you did. Thank you. Thanks very much, Stephen Shore. Thanks very much, Steve Blake. I was delighted to be a part of this great conference and this great panel. I think we've learned a lot uh, over the last couple of hours is that uh, many diseases that we've all discussed about uh, over the last couple of hours are to a large extent preventable. And it's really incumbent upon us as individuals and as members of, com our, of our com given communities to change the course uh, of these diseases. We've inherited a world that's largely free of polio. We've inherited a world that's where HIV is treatable and preventable. We inherited a world where uh, drinking and driving is socially unacceptable. How about we reciprocate and give future generations a world that's largely free of Alzheimer's disease and largely free of uh, Parkinson's. I can think of few better gifts. Yeah.